I'm going down again. The blood of the bull was brought on the altar for the deliverance of children of Israel. Again, the blood of Jesus was brought on the altar of Calvary, Golgotha, for the redemption of our sin. The Bible said this, if you kill the bull, you shall take his body, go with it outside and burn it. Jesus, the time he died, he died outside of the camp, not inside, he died on the cross, on the altar. And they did consume the body of the bull. But on the cross, Jesus consumed curse and sin for you. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Now, in the level of killing, you, you didn't kill Jesus. Alright? But it's your sin killed Jesus. Let me repeat again. We are shouting, kill the bull, kill the bull, kill the bull, yes. You, you didn't kill Jesus. But it's your sin, your curse, kill Jesus. So for you to survive, for you to make it in life, you could not live with sin and curse. You are disqualified for success. So why the bull need to die for you to succeed? Now, as of new covenant, we are connected to Jesus. He carried the image of the bull. But you, you don't kill him. But your curse and your sin did kill him. So the Bible said he made himself sin. Jesus becomes sin for you to be declared pure. Again, the Bible said this. He made himself curse for you to be declared free. So Jesus changed his identity. He didn't remain anymore Jesus Christ. He became sin. So for you to take his place. Jesus what he did. He became curse. Because you from the mother womb of your parent. You was under curse. Now for him to use you. He need to take you out from church. Now, nothing for Mahala. He need to pay the price. And the currency of money to pay with it, it's like a hand in South Africa. In the spiritual world, to redeem you, because you did belong to the devil. You did belong to the satanic bondage. You did belong under the prison of Pharaoh. Now Jesus to redeem you, he need to have a currency of money. Now that currency of money, it's called curse. He become curse. He buy curse. He buy you. And the time he buy you, you will become free from curse. So a true Christian is not under curse. You don't get what I'm saying. I'm repeating myself very well. I'm talking about a perfect and a true Christian. It's not under curse. If really you are redeemed by the blood of Jesus, curse don't have an influence upon your life. And again, sin don't have a power to control you. If you find yourself always you are under and be controlled by sin, you need to go back again in the level of your salvation. So I, the Apostle Paul said, we are working for our salvation. You need to be an hard worker to increase the level of your salvation. Sin cannot control you because Jesus paid the price. He redeemed you. What gives the devil a legal right to control you? It's sin and curse. So Jesus redeemed you from sin and curse. He becomes sin for you to not be under control of sin. He becomes curse for you to not be under control of curse. So the Bible says, if the Son of Man set you free, you are free indeed. Not Why? Because the blood did it 
for me. If you are redeemed by the blood of Jesus, any curse they will release upon you from your village, from your mother house, from your father house, it will never reach to you because there is no link. My God, I'm talking to you. There is no link. More they will increase speed. More they will get lost. More they will try to touch you. The scripture that said, don't touch my anointed shall be applied on your behalf. I prophesy over your life. Anyone did touch your life. As I preach today, let that person be correct by the blood of the Lamb. Your eye, your aim, and your eye, you receive. Anyone wants your death, you will never die the death of people because you are redeemed by the blood of Jesus. More you say, better man, more you receive. Any witchcraft rests against you, it will never work in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, divination will not do nothing against the Jacob. I prophesy over your life. Let the witchcraft fail in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus did it for you. Say yes. I will never die. Everything I'm doing in this place, I shall be rewarded by God. And I'm waiting the price in heaven. So why I'm happy if one day I die because I will see my king. I prophesy over your life. Your labors will never go in vain. Your sacrifice will never go in vain. Your prayers will pay you back. Everything you do, you shall be rewarded and say yes. The thing that Christians told is about coming back of Jesus. We must be excited of coming back of Jesus. Amen. We need to wish even Jesus to come back today. Amen. Why is it like my son and my daughter, if I travel, always if I talk to them on the phone, they used to say, Daddy, when you come back, I, I want to see you. I miss you. Hey. And sometimes, especially my baby girl, she used to cry. She will cry. If we travel, we don't want even to call because if she hears the voice, she will cry. She wants to see his father. Amen. A true Christian Amen. is the one who wants to see his father. Amen. If you don't want to see your father, meaning that one is not your father, Amen. you must be excited Amen. if Jesus come back. Amen. There is a people say, Jesus, you want to come back? say, no, no, I, I want to get married first. Listen, you must be excited. Amen. The one we preach, the one we fast, Amen. for the one we give our offering, the one we jump, we jump, but let go, we scream fire. We sleep on the floor. We fast. We pray. And we never see his face. And one day they give me a new say. He's on the way coming back. I can't wait to see my king. I can't wait to jump on him. I can't wait to say you are the one I suffer for. You are the one I give my life to you. You are the one I refuse to do nonsense for you. You are the one day and night I cry unto you. But you say yeah. The one allow me to carry his word every day, holding the Bible day and night, reading his word for me to not get lost, to have the encounter with the one I trust, the one I give my youth to him, the one I suffer for. One day Jesus will appear and I will see my king. I prophesy. Unconditioned love. The one, if my heart is in pain, he wipes my tears away. The one, I close my eyes, I pray. I wish even to see his face in vision, but I could not see his face. I pray even to hear his physical voice, but I'm keeping trusting in him. Like a crazy guy, I can't touch him. 
I can't see him. But I still believe he's still alive. I still believe one day he will come back. I still believe one day I will touch him. One day he will put the crown of life upon my head. I prophesy to someone. Get ready for coming back of Jesus. Jesus is coming back. Church, Jesus is coming back. Someone must be excited. Jesus is coming back. Sometime in worship, a few tears coming out. I open my eyes. I not see. Look at my body having the same problem. But keeping holding the word. But I know he gave me a promise. It's the same way I'm going. It will be the same way I'll come back. One day I'll see my king. One day my tears will be wiped away. One day my pain will go. Oh, one day I'll sing with the angels. One day I'll cry in his chest. And he will say to me, my son, I love you. I'm coming to talk to someone. He's coming to wipe your tears away. One day you'll see your father. The one you believe that you never see. The one you give your money that you never I see. Give up because I never see. I feel something inside of me. Said to me, keeping moving. One day you will see. I know I will not die. I'm a spirit. One day I will see my God. To see God is not depend on the members of people, members you have in the church. How many cars and monies you have. But you must get ready to see God. Amen. He's coming back. Amen. Jesus is coming back. Amen. The one we love. <laughs> the one make me cry. The one make me cry. The one make me cry. Sometimes, if I'm in pain, I can hear his voice. He said to me, don't look at the present life. The glorious crown is waiting for you. It's greater. Jonas, don't give up. Keep it moving. Sometimes people they don't understand me. But he talked to me. So don't look at people. Keep it moving. One day, I will meet with you. One day, I'll wipe your tears away. One day, I shall crown to you. I'm talking to someone. Jesus is coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back. Our labors will never go in vain. Our sacrifice and worship every day coming to church. Under the winter cold, it's too cold. Coming in the church. It's running under the rain, sitting on the chair, shaking us, freezing. One day you will pay. Your pain will never go in vain. Your daddy is coming back. Oh, he's coming back, he's coming back. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. What your father could not do is coming to do it for you. People do not understand you. You're keeping all this word. Keeping going. Yes, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's complicated. Sometimes you notice like things around you are very against you. Sometimes you don't have money, you don't have food, you don't know what to do. But you call yourself Christian born again, people are mocking on you. I do some keeping moving. But one day, the day I will see my king, I drop to tears. I roll my head in his chest. 
And so you are the one I suffer for. You are the one I look for you in the bush. You are the one I give my whole young youth aged for you. Sometimes people they throw stone against me just for you. Today I see you. The day they did hijack me, I was sitting down and said, if ever I die, I will see you today. Nothing will separate me with the love of Christ. And I know our Lord is coming back. And I know our pain will never go in faith. Keeping moving, don't give up on the Lord. Even it's raining, come in his presence. Even you don't have a food, come in his presence. Even you're feeling like you're in pain, you're sick, come in his presence. Because one day, your eyes shall see the Lord.